Sunny Donnelly, IFL TV in association with Matkins Jim Marbella. I'm at the BT Tower in London today and with me I've got the man himself, Gary Lockett. The man himself. The man himself. High praise indeed. That's all right. Um, Gary, long time no see. How you been? I'm very well, thanks. Uh, Dan is today with Liam Williams, obviously the fight going out with Liam Smith. Uh, massive fight, been in the pipeline for a while now. Mm. Um, you, glad, you glad it's done now? Yeah, yeah, I'm glad it's done. I mean, it's been, um, been a fair bit of negotiation over, over Christmas. Uh, I was at Frank's office the, uh, the day after Boxing Day. Um, so um, cut the uh, cut the holiday short, but I think we've got everything wrapped up. I think it's it's got the potential to be um, fight of the year. Um, two coming forward forward fighters, um, and uh, yes, it's what it is. It's a it's a, it's a good old old fashioned slugfest, isn't it? Good good punch up. Obviously, Liam Smith himself's been in there with uh, one of the best in Sao Alvarez. Mm. Uh, obviously, can't short that night, but it was against an elite level fighter. Yeah. Um, how much? Do you think that would have maybe taken out of Liam or taught Liam? Probably equal measures. Um, probably would have dipped his confidence just a little bit. Because um, I don't think he was able to do anything with Canelo. When Canelo was on the ropes, he wasn't able to find the gaps as he would with any other fighter. But also, I think you can take confidence from the fact that um, he, was under, he was under a lot of pressure for, for long periods in the fight. He never willed it, he didn't give up, and um, I thought it was a pretty good performance from him. I worked on the fight for Box Nation, so I thought it was a, a good performance from him. I know he didn't win, but um, I think he could be proud of his performance. As I say, he didn't, didn't quit, he didn't look overawed at any, at any time in the fight, so um, you know, he can, I think his stock rose after that. Obviously, uh, your man, Liam Williams, uh, regarded as one of the, the brightest prospects coming up, obviously. Massive in Wales, and now he's on BT Sport. I'm sure that a lot of the world are going to see him more. Yeah. Um, how good is he? Well, he's very good. I mean, um, he's, he hasn't shown anywhere near what he's capable of, really. I mean, um, he's uh, he's found his power maybe 18 months ago. Um, just needs to needs to concentrate a little bit more. Uh, last couple of fights. I haven't been the best performances, but there's reasons for that. You know, the last fight he had nothing to beat, so I think he, he was disinterested. He just wanted to walk through him against Corcoran. I think um, I don't think he was ever. I don't think Liam ever respected the fact that Gary could not maybe beat him in any way. I don't think he was afraid of what was coming back. And obviously they wound each other up at the at the press conferences. So I think he tried to kill him with every shot. Um, but you know, when when Liam. <clears throat> When Liam has fear, I think the last time he had fear was when he boxed Ronnie Ephraim. You know, he was an underdog, nobody heard of him. And he, he, I think he realised if he didn't box to the proper game plan, he could have got beaten. Um, look at him that night, he, it was a wonderful performance. And um, I think when he's got the fear, then he's going he's gonna to fight cold, as I call it. He's going to concentrate and, and he's going to produce his best performance, I think, um, when he's got that fear in him. Um, and I think he's going to do that in Manchester on April the 8th. Who else have you got in the gym at the moment? Yeah, Alex Hughes, 9-0. and um, he's, he's on the undercard. Jay Harris, fighter of the Commonwealth Flyweight title. Cool. February the 24th against Thomas Asomba, which is you know a fight which Thomas got a lot of experience, even though he's only had nine fights as a, as a pro, he's got a lot of experience, he's very highly thought of. But Jay Harris is a um, very good body punch, he's top six on the trot. Good kid. Um, I've got Zach Davis, and I've got Chris Jenkins as well. So, um, good kids, really good kids. It's all happening in the gym. Obviously, yeah. um, a, a touchy subject, but it was obviously all over the news. Um, your old fighter, Nick Blackwell, mm. unfortunately, decided, got involved in boxing again and got yeah. himself injured again. What was your first reaction when you see the news? Disbelief. I mean, um, Tuesday night, um, I had a phone call off Dan, his brother, and um, I had a couple of missed calls off his mate, his best mate earlier as well, so I thought they're trying to wind me up here. So I started laughing, but then it quickly became evident that he was telling the truth and it was undergoing an operation and it's just, just absolutely devastated, you know, and um, you know, what he's done is stupid, but there were people involved as well. Um, there were people involved, not just the two that was been banned, there were people that um, aided and abetted him, and people who helped him out. I don't think I know, but I know. I know they are. And 
Unfortunately, they haven't got pro licenses, so they can't. Nothing can be done. But they know they are, and I just hope they're going to look in the mirror every day. Um, it's just heartbreaking for his family, his poor family. Um, it's a massive loss to us in the gym because he used to come to the gym once a week. He used to train really hard on the circuits and stuff like that. But I mean, you know, Nick, Nick had a brain injury. So as far as we were concerned, he was just coming there just to, to stay in shape. Um, we didn't ever realize, I don't think we ever realized how much he was missing boxing, you know, and um, you know, it's, 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 I'm still trying to get my head around it now, you know, it's, it's, it's just heartbreaking. And um, it's heartbreaking for me, and it's very hard for me, so what his family going through, I really don't know. But um, he's, he's improving um, all the time. He's in a rehab, uh, a specific brain rehabilitation, brain injury rehabilitation centre, and um, he's improving. And I think he's ahead of schedule, but it is going to be a long process. And uh, you know, we just hope that he, uh, he can get back to where he was. And I think I spoke to you the Wednesday after the first incident. I rang you up, and uh, we obviously had a, a little talk, and you told me about everything. And I could hear from your voice how the emotional you was, and how yeah. sad you was. The fact that. He's gone in there, putting himself at risk and, and done this again. What did you feel a little bit angry or disappointed at any point? Of course, yeah, of course. You know, it's, um, it just it just defies belief. But I think I've tried to put myself in this position, and then I've tried to put myself in the position of someone who, who was really, really struggling. And he must have been struggling with it so much, you know, to put yourself in harm's way. Um, so, you know, he, obviously he's the main culprit, we know that, there was a, a lot of stick on, on social media and things like that, and his family have had stick on social media, how could he be so stupid and stuff like this, and granted, of course he was stupid, but, you know, we still, we still care a great deal for him and uh, we want him to make a full recovery. Obviously there's more than one boxer out there with a, with a brain injury that's had to retire, obviously Tommy Martin recently, mm. um, what would you say to any boxer who's going to try and step into that room with a brain injury or boxer who's been offered? Off, I had a phone call off a boxer recently who had, who's got a brain injury <clears throat> and they said they've been sparring for years. <clears throat> so I was like, what? And they've been sparring for years even with a brain injury and um, their words to me was, I'll never spar again seeing what's happened to Nick now. So he's not the only one and I don't think that the kid that phoned me I don't think there's only two of them. So, and the kid that phoned me, again, was very much like Nick, you know, loved boxing, loved sparring, loved combat sports, that type of thing. So, Nick isn't the only one, and there's, there's probably fighters out there that, that, that are still doing it. Um, so, it was, it was a massive shock to me to get this phone call, because, again, I thought, how could Nick be so stupid? But, as I say, he's not the only one. And, uh, that phone call was that, that hit me for six as well because people who put their life on the line, you know, they should probably think of their families first, you know, and think of the people that depend on them. Brain injury is a brain injury, and this is um, this is a hard, brutal sport. And it's only when I think you have fighters in this position that, that are close to you that you realise how brutal it is. And seeing them on on a life support machine and seeing their families, seeing what it's doing to their families. It's absolutely heartbreaking, heart wrenching, and um, we've all been through this now. Everyone, myself, and, and the boys in the gym, we've been through this with with Nick, and um, it's horrific. And I can honestly say, I wouldn't, I wouldn't wish it on anyone. Obviously, you said that he was a little bit disappointed, a little bit angry, and whatever because he's made his decision. But at the same time, can you appreciate how hard it must be for a man who basically has had all he all he knows taken away from him? Mm. And that how hard it would have been to just to step away completely. Yeah, but you know, as, as I said, you know, it's in some in some way, shape, or form, I possibly can can. But at the end of the day, he's had a brain injury, and um, I think we've got to focus on the positives, really. And um, what he's done is stupid, but he's in this position now, and we're just all open and praying that he, he can get back to to where he was before. Um, and I just believe that you know he's such a he's just a, such a bright, positive young man who's a good looking boy he could you know he, i think he could accomplish anything but his mind to so um as i say uh, myself and the, and the family are, are hoping he can just get back to where he was 
we know it's a long, slow process, but um, he's making good strides. Have you seen him recently? Yeah, we're going. Uh, I saw him last week, and then um, Liam Williams and I, and we're going to pop into to the hospital on the way back tonight. So, um, yeah. All right, that's good stuff. Give him my best, and we'll do. I'm sure everyone watching this will give him the best as well. Yeah. Um, Gary, obviously, best luck with Liam and the rest of the boys in the training camp. Uh, give my best to Nick. Uh, hope he gets well soon, and hopefully I'll catch up with you soon. All right. Yeah. Top man. Pleasure. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you.